Hey everybody, we've come here today because Sailor has some cool questions she wanted to ask, science questions that she wanted answers to and she figured that I might actually know the answers to those so we figured you guys might be interested as well. What's your first question, sir? Why do dogs bark? What's really cool about dogs, right? So we can hear certain noises between a certain range with our ears and they call that the sonic range, right? Dogs can also hear within an additional range called ultrasonic. The noises that we can't even hear with our own ears. They're barking at leaves falling to the ground. They could be barking at leaves falling <laughs> to the ground. They really could. They have about 220 million cells in their noses to smell things with. How much do you have? How much do you have? You have five to six million. They have about 220 million. That's got... a little disappointing. <laughs> And that's why they use them to detect bombs at the airport and sometimes they get them to look for people that Sheep. are... Sheep. Yep, they get them to look for people that are buried in earthquakes because they can smell the people that we can. Yeah. That's creepy. They're pretty clever. They're creepy. How do you get tears? We actually have some special glands up in your eyes. Do you know what a gland is? No. It's like a <laughs> part of your body that produces something. It might produce like a chemical or in this case it produces tears. Why did you think I knew what a gland is? You go to a good school. They teach you a lot of good things. I thought you might have learnt what a gland is, but maybe getting to that in grade five. I'm a young age. You're a young age, right? <laughs> You're an old soul in a young body. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so you have glands up in your eyes, right? Yeah. And those glands actually produce liquid. It's actually salty. It's almost salt water, right? So if I go into the water and see and drink it, I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> I get your logic. That's highly incorrect. <laughs> that water, right, runs over your eyes all the time. You know how people's eyes are a little bit shiny? Yeah, because that's because there's actually moisture on your eyes and it actually gets rid of bad bacteria in your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And then it runs into your tear duct, so it almost comes out one system and runs into another pipe. That's really creepy. Mm. But <laughs> sometimes you get so overwhelmed with emotion, it turns those glands on and it produces more and more water, which is crying, yeah? Yeah. And then the little ducts at the bottom can't catch all that water because there's too much water because you're so emotional. And so then the tears actually start running down your face. Is that how they make rubber ducks? What? Ducks. Rubber ducks? Ducks. You said there's ducks. No, ducks. Ducks. <laughs> D-U-C-T-S. Ducks. It's like a pipe. Not D-U-C-K-S. Mm. Yeah. So if you had a tear duct, it would be a really sad animal. A tear duct. That's just the thing. That's just... That's not right. Why are sloths so slow? Why are sloths so slow? Can I start with a fun fact? Sloths are actually quite fast swimmers in water. I know that. Mm. How did you know that? You told me. We watched a video, didn't we? <laughs> so, so the reason sloths are really slow, they actually have really bad eyesight. Like super bad. So if they move too fast, they might actually crash into things. They're essentially colorblind. Well, that is, we only see certain colours. So all they can see is old Mickey Mouse. Like Steamboat Willie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> but they also have a really, do you know, I was going to say metabolism. Do you know what metabolism is? No idea. <laughs> metabolism. So when you eat food, your body's metabolism is what digests that. It's how quickly your body digests food and turns it into energy. Their metabolism is really slow. So therefore they can't move very fast or they would burn way more energy than their body is making. Pretty sciencey, but I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. It's mind blowing. Because otherwise if they move really fast, they just run out of energy and just... Die. If they could, die. That raises an interesting question about whether you could cook a sloth in the oven, I guess, and have it for dinner. No. <laughs> no. 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 Why is the sky blue? The sky blue. Good question. Well, so, the sun, right? The sun looks white to us, like a bright light. Yeah. But it's actually made up of lots of different colours of the rainbow. But then when it comes down through all the gases that surround Earth, all that light gets scattered out into different colours. Do, you know, do you know what a prism is? Do you know where they shine a light through a prism and it breaks into different colours? It's like that. Why? But because of the way that the blue colour scatters further and wider, we see more blue in in the sky than any other colour. So the sky could be any colour, but it's just blue. Yeah, the sky could essentially be any colour. And so at sunset, because the sun's in a different spot, red and orange are actually getting scattered more than blue. So we see red and orange at sunset rather than the blue. 
Oh no, you got a question, go. If you're on another planet, will you turn into a pigeon? What about a duck? I was going to note though that on other planets like say Mars, the sky is actually a different colour because they have different gases in the air so the sun reflects differently. During daytime, Mars has an orange-red sky during the day and we have blue. But as the sun sets, their sky turns to blue-grey. So on Mars, it's actually the opposite of Earth. So if you're on Mars, you'll think it's night Oh yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Do you think nighttime is daytime? And mind you, at that point, you'd also be thinking, why are there no ducks here? Yeah. <laughs> and why are there no pigeons? Why are there no pigeons on this planet? Yeah. If I was stuck on an island, could I live off coconuts? Now, I'll try and keep this short, but in essence, there's enough coconut water and vitamins and nutrients in the, in the, they call it flesh, the white bit in the coconut, that you could probably live for quite a while and not be too low in special vitamins that your body needs. You could probably live for about six months, I reckon. Okay, bye. That's, that's, that's a Oh, you're gone. I'm back. But chances are, though, in that six months, you're more likely to maybe get a stomach bug or something else wrong with you. And then you would end up getting really dehydrated from vomiting and having diarrhea. And then you would be so sick, you probably couldn't collect more coconuts, but you'd end up dying from something else. <laughs> that's my very positive answer. It doesn't sound that good. But that's science. Sometimes science doesn't sound good. You want to know a good fact? I would love to about know. About coconuts? Yeah, tell me a great fact about coconuts. I've never had a coconut. You've never had a coconut. All right, you want to say bye to everyone? Toodles. Toodles.